Hey yo, how's it going everybody? Happy for y'all today an upload first of all, which I apologize about no upload Sunday. I did make a little community post on my YouTube letting you guys know what was going on and I just want to thank you guys so much for the kind words because I was I was literally just so frustrated because I had already missed Saturday and then I had to miss Sunday because of my computer this time around. Luckily though, later that night, I think I figured out the issue. So if this video goes up on Monday, and then just know we should have no more PC issues and we should be good to continue the daily upload grind hopefully so yeah thank you guys for understanding also if you follow me on Twitter I tweeted on there I've actually been trying to be a little bit more active on Twitter so if you want to follow me say what's up then yeah I'll say what's up back or something I guess so and let me know in the comment section do you kind of like this format where I show you guys the chat as well or would you rather me just show you the battle screen because I was originally gonna do this live, but then I saw, oh, he brought Stall Game One, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to sit here and like upload an hour long, like the whole series here probably took an hour. I didn't want to upload potentially an hour long video with maybe only two matches in it and the first half just being against Stall. So I was like, I'm just gonna post comment. Hopefully, you guys understand, and I will try to do uh, future rounds live commentated. So yeah, be on the lookout for those. So much like our NU Winter Seasonal that is still going on for Smogon, uh, this is a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket. Bracket. So we need to lose two matches to be completely knocked out of the tournament and every round is a best two out of three format So we have a pretty good chance to hopefully uh, not get absolutely destroyed through this tournament And hopefully we can win round one here as we lost uh, round one in NU unfortunately So if you guys do enjoy hit that thumbs up button down below Let's try and get uh, 60 likes this time around you guys have been amazing with the support and destroying the like goal. So taking a look at the matchup here, my opponent has stall, obviously. So that's a little bit annoying, but I guess it's kind of cool that you can still make stall in lower tiers. I know stall is uh, mainly seen in like UU and OU on occasion in NU and RU. I haven't seen them that often, but uh, PU stall is actually really annoying because even though, yes, I have a Regirock, uh, Natude is very, very bulky and I'm a defensive Regirock, so I cannot beat this Natu 1v1, and then if he has Toxic, he beats my Regirock 1v1. So there's a good chance I may not be able to get up rocks in this match until I get rid of this Natu. So hopefully I can find some way to get rid of this thing and we can get up rocks. He could also have Defog on Silvali, so I do have to be very, very careful with that. But because he is a very defensive team, this means my choice Bandit Stalin can actually just put in a lot of work in this game. All I need to do is I believe weaken Polyrath and Stumpfisk and I think if I remember I'm pretty sure Natu does get to a KO by return or after a little bit of chip all I need to do is kind of chip down his potential physically defensive mons and then Stoutland just kind of murders everything uh, unfortunately Alolan Eggy is not going to be doing much if this is a Spadef bulky Articuno if it's not Spadef bulky maybe it'll be like sub roost uh, Draco Meteor still does a ridiculous amount of damage which is really good we have Scarf Mesprit and then we have Z Rain Dance Swana along with uh, Thick Fat Assault Vested Alolan Raticate, which I actually really like in this game because his only answer is most likely just gonna be Polyrath. Which, uh, even then, I still have measurements of being able to deal with Polyrath, but my Alolan Raticate can just kind of click knockoff on his entire team, unless this is also potentially uh, Silvali Fairy, which it could be, I guess, as just another bulky. Uh, pivot option and then parting shots really good and then obviously defog but yeah shout out to my boy Harris for passing me this squad but looking at lead matchups I was very positive he wouldn't lead with the polyrath so I decided to lead off with my Alolan Raticate because him leading off with Stumpfisk was actually a pretty smart option on his end because it can live just about any hit from anything that I have on my team except for Alolan Executor and he knows I most likely would not lead with that just because even if I did lead with it he can just safely switch into potentially Spadef Bulk or the Kuno or even the Audino. So turn one, I already get the static, which um, really sucks. Like if this had happened maybe a couple turns later, that would have been fine. I would have been perfectly happy with that. But it actually does kind of end up helping me out here because as you saw, he went for the Toxic. So this was kind of a blessing in disguise because you're going to see that Alolan Raticate is actually pretty handy throughout this entire match. So I may be kind of skipping through some turns that are a little bit repetitive because again, this is stall. I don't want to sit here for like 20 minutes and just kind of go over this one match. So I bring in Eggy. I go for the Draco. Turns out that he is, of course, a very spadef bulky Articuno. Clearly, I do not want to stay in here. So I'm going to switch into my thick, fat, assault vested Alolan Raticate. Shouts out to my boy. 
its regulator as I try to go for the U-turn here. I get fully paralyzed. This actually kind of sucks uh, because now I don't gain any type of momentum, but it does mean that I can stay in here and go for the knockoff to try and chip down the Stumpfisk after that amount of damage. Uh, Stumpfisk is guaranteed in range of where Stoutland can 2 KO him. If he is not Fizz Death bulky, and then Stalin knocks him out at this amount of HP regardless, as he reveals to have an... I was gonna say Arceus. He reveals to have a Silvali Poison, which is really cool. Uh, this means that he should not be able to do much to my Alolan Raticate, and that can definitely be something I will use to my advantage as I switch into my Regirock here. Uh, this was kind of a questionable play on my end. I really thought he was gonna go for the Parting Shot here, but he actually ends up going... For the parting shot the next turn and because of clear body parting shot actually does not end up working now this is kind of good and kind of bad it's really good because obviously he's forced to stay in here so i'm able to get off some damage with the rock slide which i did rock slide in hopes to catch the uh natute on the switch in but because he did not switch out this turn i'm thinking okay maybe he's going to now expect me to rock slide so i can hopefully try to get up my rocks here as he goes for the poison fang and he gets the poison with the poison fang and this is really bad because now my regirock is on a timer although there is a good possibility he has toxic on natu this just means i'm toxic earlier much earlier than i probably should have been and i am on a timer a lot sooner than i should be so that's going to be a little bit bad for me in this match here <laughs> oh Oh, this name is this name precedes me for a reason, as you guys can see here. So he ends up going for the defog here, which is really good on his part. I will be able to hit him up with an earthquake there, uh, just barely, barely missing out on the KO. But I don't want to go for rocks here, since the switch out into Natu is very obvious. As I do a solid 43%, unfortunately, that is not enough damage. Now. I thought about doubling out here, but I really did not want to risk him trying to go for parting shot with Silvali because if he really wanted to, he could have stayed in and parting shot regardless of what I did with my Regirock in hopes that I would switch out and that way he would gain a little bit of momentum. So that's why I decided to be aggressive with my Rock Slide here when I guess in hindsight I should have doubled out potentially into my Alolan Eggy or even just into my Alolan Raticate here. That way I could have maybe gone for the U-Turn or click Draco Meteor respectively. As I bring in my Stoutland here, I expect him just to go for the safe Roost because honestly there's no reason for him not to just go for Roost as I'm going to stay in here and for the next couple of turns, I'm just going to kind of click Frustration. This is 100% a defensive Polyrath. I definitely live any one hit this thing wants to go for as i do get a little bit of payback on him and he ends up missing the circle throw which was really really huge there because now i still just click return and look oh my god that did 70 percent to an audio ladies and gentlemen that is disgusting so he's gonna protect here which is actually really smart on his end because if he can stall me out of my frustrations then there's nothing my stoutland will be able to nuke him with uh, on the stab side so he's Stacks off Polyrath, amazing for me because now I no longer have to worry about that for my Alolan Raticate and because he does have Silvali Poison, my Alolan Raticate is more or less just a free pivot into the entirety of his team and I still get to just click knock off as I'm going to just return here, uh, frustration sorry, because I know I can live any one hit as he goes for the freeze dry, luckily does not get the freeze, down goes the Silvali along with the Polyrath, in comes the Stumpfist. Now as I mentioned earlier, at this amount of HP, Stumpfist can actually live a frustration from my Stoutland because I'm not Adam and I'm actually Jolly. So I don't want to risk not only him living but him potentially paralyzing me with a discharge because that's going to cripple my Stoutland and it's going to force me to have to use Healing Wish a lot sooner with my Mesprit here. So I decided to switch out here in hopes that he would either just discharge, uh, maybe he got rocks up again or he was maybe going to go for the Toxic. As he does go for the discharge, that does nothing as I will be able to just consistently chip down this Stumpfisk and I'm going to go for the Draco and this, oh my god! Oh, I just barely lived on four. You're going to see this Audino. Oh my lord, guys. This Audino is just such a giant, giant issue. So I really felt I had no drawback with Draco. Uh, the Articuno, uh, I think the Articuno was actually low. Yeah, because it took a return. I'm, okay, I'm, I apologize if I keep saying return. But yeah, it took a frustration 
from my Articuno and he wasn't able to go for the roost. So at this point, I figured Draco Meteor just gave me a free KO. As the Audino just barely lives, he's gonna decide to go for the Protect here. I am fine with that. I am still going to Draco once again. Now, at this moment, I really debated on whether or not I did want to pull a double. I, I felt that he could maybe stay in here, but looking back at it, it was very risky for him to think that I would actually want to switch out. So I should have made the double here instead of just kind of being blindly aggressive as I do go for another Draco. This Articuno will be able to live it this time around. I guess the good thing is, is that Audino is at 16%. Uh, if you factor in Regenerator, I think it's at about 46, 50-ish percent around there. So again, this is where if I had just doubled out, it would have been better because if I doubled into my Stoutland, at this point, I just get a kill. He literally had no no switch into my Stoutland if I did pull a double here, which I really wish I had done uh, as you're going to see because this thing is going to get a little bit dragged out here. So I'm on fast just because again, this is like the longest match out of the series and I kind of want to get this out of the way. So I get paralyzed there with my Alolan Raticate as I went for the knockoff. Getting rid of Articuno's leftovers would have been so amazing because that means it doesn't have any form of passive recovery. And again, my Regirock cannot beat that Natu 1v1, especially now because I am also toxic on my Regirock. So that means this Articuno is going to be able to freely switch in and out as it pleases on everything except my Stoutland. And that in itself is really bad. And I... Don't think if I had knocked off leftovers, it would have made uh, that drastic of a change. But just the little factor of him not having leftovers in general would have forced him to try and roost more. It would have meant that, again, he had no form of passive recovery. And that would have just been really good, in my opinion, as he goes for the freeze right here. I get paralyzed again on the knockoff. And I think I end up knocking off here finally as I managed to get rid of the leftovers on Audino. This is kind of nice for my Alolan Eggy and my Swana because if I can weaken this Audino, that's going to be really nice. As I try to pursue him here in case he wanted to switch, I am going to go for the U-turn into my Stoutland. And much like earlier, I'm just going to click Frustration with literally no care in the world. There is nothing he has that is going to live any two hits as he goes for the Toxic. Now, this is really annoying because I did not expect him to have toxic on this Audino and I still don't know what his final move is but with him getting the toxic off of my Stoutland this means eventually I am gonna have to go for the healing wish with my Mesprit so I'm just gonna stay in here just be aggressive because it, I literally have no drawback in doing so he has no switch-ins to my Stoutland whatever comes in is going to get O-Code or to a KO'd because at this point if that Natu was able to live two frustrations from Choice Bandit Stoutland he probably would have switched it in by now uh, just to try and rack up toxic damage on me so down goes the Stoutland and I am up six to three and you would think i'm in an amazing position right you would think that at this point like how do i lose this choice bandit stoutland with healing wish support basically just murders the entirety of his team right so he brings in the audino as i just sack off my radicate at this point radicate honestly has just put in so much work being able to knock off gaming momentum has been really good and it, it would have even put in more work if i didn't get paralyzed as much as i have been getting paralyzed please stop doing this to me <laughs> So I go for the knockoff here, just trying to get off some type of damage on this Audino. And then I do expect him to go for the wish as I go into my Swana here. I want to go for the Scald in hopes that I can get a burn. And I do get a little lucky here and I get a crit burn. Now this is where this Articuno not having the, uh, what's it called? The... The leftovers, if I didn't get paralyzed with my Alolan Raticate earlier, would have been amazing. So, yeah, there was no reason for me to have stayed in here, actually. But getting rid of leftovers still would have been nice, I think. So, I sack off Marticuno. That's fine, as he reveals to have the Heal Bell. And I'm going to bring in my Regirock here, because at this point, I'm in a really bad predicament. At this point, I'm thinking, I don't necessarily know how I'm going to win this. Uh, mainly because of this Articuno in itself. And with my Regirock being toxic, that's really bad for me as well. Like, yeah, I could have potentially brought in my Mesprit here, gone for the Healing Wish in the Stoutland. But at that point, I don't know if that would have been my best play in this scenario because I don't one-shot the Articuno. And over time, he's going to be able to live hits with Audino and Articuno which Articuno can freeze dry me, then he switches into Audino, and then he can kind of just pivot around at that point. And actually, 
Not the more that I think about it, I probably should have just brought in Mesprit here. That might have been my better play. Cause if I if I brought in Mesprit, Healing Wish in the Stalin, I go for Frustration. This is two AKO'd. I didn't know it doesn't switch in. And then neither does Natude. I guess I was too scared of the fact that he could have eventually toxic my Stoutland again with his Audino. So yeah, I think I kind of just misplayed right here. I probably should have just brought in my Mesprit instead. As I double out into my Eggy, the fact he wants to bring in Natude is way too obvious to me. So I'm going to double out into Eggy. At least this way I can maybe try to apply some offensive pressure to something on his team. And I believe I do just go for a Flamethrower. Because what I want to try and do is weaken this Articuno to put it in range of where hopefully my Stoutland will be able to knock him out. At this point I've realized my Alolan Eggy is doing nothing for me in this game as long as this Articuno is around. So again, dude, leftovers. Oh, this thing would be at 50% right now. It would be at 50% right now. And it's going to be brought back up to 64%. So the fact that he was brought up to 64% after checking the cup, a, a uh, frustration does not knock out Articuno here. But one thing I completely overlooked and one thing that I realized after I had brought in my Regirock was that Facade literally just murders this Articuno at 64%. Audino is going to get absolutely blown back too, as well as the Natu. Now, I am at about 24%. So I switch in after rocks, I'm at 12%, and then I take that 6% from Toxic. But that's fine, because as long as my Stoutland is still alive, I can still bring in my Mesper to Healing Wish it back up. So I should have brought in my Stoutland here, clicked Facade, and claimed my kill as he's going to switch into the Natu and I foolishly try to get a Brox. This was just a really bad sequence of plays here as you guys are going to see. So I'm going to stay in Rock Slide again. I don't I don't really know what I'm doing with my Regirock right now. I'm going to switch into Swana as he goes for the Nightshade. I figured there was no move that this Natu had that's going to knock out my Swana uh, on the switch in after Rock. So I try to go for my... Hydro Vortex here in hopes that he would either switch into Articuno or he may try and leave in uh, Natu and I just kind of waste my Swana Z move here because this Audino is just so ridiculously fat and then I Scald Articuno do nothing to him as he gains the wish back with leftovers as well so i'm gonna just try and fish for a burn here with this final scald again i just want to get off a little bit of damage on this articuno so he's in guaranteed range of where my stoutland can knock him out so i bring in stoutland here i'm clicking facade you are getting murdered my friend as down goes natu in comes audino i still have an a live Stoutland and I still have my Mesprit in the back which is great because what I want to do now is actually bring in my uh, my Regirock just on the off chance that he does not go for an offensive move because with me being at 6% he can literally just go for protect and ensure that I get KO'd by the um the Toxic and with my Regirock still being able to live rocks and Toxic here, this allows me to potentially get up my Stealth Rocks. And I guess in hindsight, I could have been aggressive and gone for the Rock Slide here. But at this moment in the match, he's in a bit of a predicament. He either has to choose to allow me to keep up Rocks, or he has to choose to KO my Regirock. No, sorry, sorry, that's the whole, that's the same thing. What am I talking about? Yeah, he either needs to choose to KO Regirock or he needs to go for Defog. Those are the only plays he can make in this scenario because if he goes for Defog, I knock him out with Rock Slide. If he knocks me out with Freeze Dry, I Healing Wish into Stalin and Stalin still just wins me the battle at this point. So I decide to be aggressive as I mentioned and I'm going to go straight for the Rock Slide because I'm going to make him choose. You either choose Rocks or you choose your Articuno and he chose Rocks as I'm able to knock out Articuno and in comes his last Mon which is Audino. Now at this point in the match, if I was not Healing Wish Mesprit, I know I lost and I'm guessing that's how he was trying to play this match was that he was hoping I wouldn't be Healing Wish but because I literally not brought my Mesprit in throughout the entirety of this game. He doesn't know what I'm running on my Mesprit. As he goes for the Protect, I Healing Wish into Stoutland, and that is basically GG. There is no way that this Audino is going to live two superpowers. I don't even care if it does tank the first one and he goes for the Wish and Protect. Because he doesn't have leftovers, I don't need to worry about him getting that extra bit of HP, and then Superpower will be able to finish him off. And that was one hectic game one. To be fair though, I did kind of misplay halfway through through. Uh, I should have been more aggressive with my Stoutland, uh, but again, I didn't realize Facade 
uh, was just a straight nuke, and that was just completely on my end. But yeah, Stoutland, pretty dope. I love Eradicate, also really awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, so we got game two here. Shout out to my amazing, amazing friend, Mr. Tone, for passing me this really cool squad. We have Scarf Dodrio, uh, Defensive Helmet Persian, uh, Defensive Mesprit, Assault Vest Eel, Lilligan with Z-Move, and Specs Jellison, which is actually just disgusting because Specs Jellison pretty much just gets a kill with Hydro Pump on his team. Also, if that Drampa is not Zap Zipper, my... Uh, Lilligan basically just wins the game. However, though, on his side of the field, if that is a choice banded Agron, I literally have no good switch into Agron whatsoever. I also don't have any type of hazard removal, so spikes plus rocks could be a little bit problematic. And then shift tree, depending on if it's SD or not, could actually be a giant, giant threat. So going into this game here, I figured that my... Uh, Scarf Dojo can actually put in a lot of work. All I need to do is get rid of this Aggron and I can just click Brave Bird and return accordingly and get some kills. If I can get some safe switches into my Jellicent, I just click Water Spell and that's going to be amazing. So I decided to lead off with my Alolan Persian. I figured he wouldn't lead off with Hitmonchan. You never really see Hitmonchan as a lead and I don't think he's going to risk leading off with Drampal turn one either. So I figured he would lead off with either Mesprit, Quillfish, or the Aggron. All three of which my Alolan Persian here is able to deal with as I'm going to go straight for the parting shot into my mess rate. If this is banded, I am going to get smacked, but that means in return, I can at least get up my rocks or potentially hit him with a hidden power ground. As he turns to the be defensive, uh, we both get up rocks here. And I thought about going straight for the HP ground, and I kind of wish I had done that instead. But as it turns out, he actually has the Shucka Berry, so I guess it doesn't really matter that I didn't go straight for the HP ground because this HP ground here is going to be able to knock him off. Uh, knock him out, sorry. However, though, he has been able to put my Mesprit very, very low because he hit two head smashes um, almost back to back, basically, one every other turn. So this is bad because now this Hitmonchan is actually looking like a giant, giant problem to my team. So I need to be very careful with Hitmonchan as in comes to Shift Tree. I still have use for my Mesprit in this match. Plus, I figured that maybe my Alolan Persian here was going to be a safe switch. But if he was Leftovers, uh, not Leftovers, sorry, uh, Leaf Storm, he may not want to Leaf Storm because Electros are typically Assault Vested. So him going for knockoff here, I think, was by far his better play. As I do take the knockoff, he finds out that I am Rocky Helmet, but this is okay, I think, because I'm able to chip down the shift tree as I decide to go for the foul play here. Uh, in hindsight, maybe I should have gone for the parting shot, but I guess the chip damage off on Hitmonchan is really nice because now I will be able to parting shot into my Jellicent, which I don't think he's going to want to go straight for a Thunder Punch. And now I have my Jellicent in here for free, not even... Quillfish or Drampaw is switching in to take a Choice Specs Water Spout. As in comes the Quillfish, look at how much damage this does. That did 70%. That did so much more damage than I was expecting it to do. And I honestly got a little bit greedy here. I really should not have left in my Jellison because I completely blanked on the fact that Quillfish learns Destiny Bond. So... Yeah, I just lose my biggest offensive threat and one of the best answers I had for Hitmonchan because my Mesprit is so low and now I don't really know what to do. Like, I don't know what he's going to bring in here, but I'm pretty sure it won't be Drampa and it won't be Shiftree. Most likely his Hitmonchan or his Mesprit, which is why I actually bring in my Dodro in hopes that he would bring in Hitmonchan knowing that it can basically deal with everything on my team except Dodrio, but he does make the smart play in bringing in Mesprit here, and I'm gonna switch out because there is no chance that I ever one-shot this Mesprit, and if he is Choice Specs, then I definitely don't wanna stay in here because the thing about Scarf Dodrio is that I outspeed his entire team, even if he has a Scarf of his own. All I need to do is weaken Drampa a little bit, and then I just click uh, Return for free because Return at this point can knock out Shift Tree and it knocks out the uh, Hitmonchan. However, though, I do have to be fearing Mock Punch and Sucker Punch accordingly, but at this point, I'm trying to figure out what I can potentially do to maybe win. So I want to try and get off some damage on this Mesprit as well to hopefully put him in range of where my Scarf Dodrio will be able to knock him out. But he switches into his Hitmonchan, which was a good play on his part. And 
I honestly have no good switching to this Hitmonchan whatsoever. I am so terrified that this Drampa is Zap Zipper that I don't want to bring in my Lilligant. After Rocks, my Mesprit is going to be way too low to where I can even take a hit from this Hitmonchan most likely. Like, yeah, I can Psychic, but Psychic is so obvious that he just gets a free switch into a Shift Tree and this Mesprit doesn't have U-Turn. So bringing in Mesprit is basically a nail in the coffin for myself in this game. I can't bring in my Alolan Persian either because I don't knock him out with the, what's it called, foul play. And even if I parting shot, I still need to switch something in on this Hitmonchan. So I check the calc, even if he has Adam and Max Attack, Iron Fisted, I still take one Mach Punch and it's a risk I'm willing to take here as I do tank the Mach Punch, I will be able to safely go for the return and get rid of this Hitmonchan. Unfortunately though, I can no longer win with my Dodrio. But he ends up bringing in his Mesprit here. He does not know that I am Scarf, so I'm able to do a pretty solid chunk of damage. Honestly, this is an offensive Mesprit at this point, we know this, but I did not think that I would still do at least 50% to Mesprit. So I lose my Dojo, rocks are up, I have no removal. There was literally like nothing else I could do. I don't want to bring in my Electros here, although in hindsight, I probably should have brought in Electros instead of bringing in my Lilligant because what I was thinking is that at this moment, I need to risk this Drampaw potentially not being a Zap Sipper. So I bring in Lilligan, I know I get a free Quiver Dance here as in comes the Drampaw. This most likely is Choice Specs, but I'm going to risk it here and go for the Quiver Dance again as he goes for the Flamethrower and good God, that does 75%. I didn't, oh my God, dude, that did way, way more than I was expecting. And it turns out that he is indeed Zap Sipper and I just basically lose the battle because I cannot deal with this Drampaw, like there's just nothing I can do against this Drampaw. And even then, he still has the Mesprit, which is Scarfed, outspeeds my entire team at this point. And Shift Tree can also just beat my Mesprit. So yeah, a uh, really clunky game two. I really feel like I played as well as I could have. The only misplay I regret is leaving in my Jellicent on Quillfish. That's where I think things really started just to go downhill for me. Because once I lost Jellicent, I lost such a hard hitting breaker and a really solid switch into Hitmonchan. And then at that point he was able to kind of dissect my team and then Drampaw being Zap Zipper was the nail in the coffin at that moment. So yeah, we won game one, we lost game two. Hopefully we can win game three and let's jump into that one. Do you guys notice how much faster it is when you don't play stall? <laughs> so yeah, I apologize that the first game was like 15 plus minutes, but there was also so much going on in game one, and then game two was kind of more like uh, straightforward. And then on to game three here, turns out that he really likes offense at this point, even though he brought stall uh, the first game. So this is clearly a rain team. There's, if you see Ludicolo plus, a Kabutops, I'm pretty sure that can kind of just tell you it's rain. Not only is it rain, but he potentially has rocks on Kabutops and spikes on the Frostlass, which means this is spike stacking rain offense, and that is absolutely terrible, especially when you factor in the fact that I have no ground type for the Manetric, so that thing, if it's Scarfed, is just Volt switching for free and is easily the biggest threat on his team. Then Ludicolo and Kabutops in the rain are a whole nother issue on their own. I guess the good thing is, is that Scarf Dojo, again, shouts out to my boy Tone for the team here. Scarf Dojo is actually able to outspeed the entirety of his team except for Kabutops in the rain. And that's the biggest issue for my Dojo in this match. Essentially, if I can get rid of Kabutops, or ensure that Kabutops is not in rain, my Scarf Dojo can actually put in a whole lot of work, especially because I myself also have a hazard stacking core. I have rocks on Mesprit and I have spikes on Frostlass. We have Choice Banded Aggron, which to be fair, just kills something with Head Smash. We have Offensive Nasty Plot, Darkinium Z, Alolan Persian, and then we have Fat Polyrath here. So looking at leads, I was absurdly terrified like i was so scared of him leading off with scarf manetric that i decided just to lead with my persian if he is scarf then i can easily take a bolt switch overheat thunder whatever and then dark pulse it or maybe try to go for my z move against it or i can parting shot myself but it turns out that he is not z 
No, it turns out that he's not Scarf, he's actually Specs. As I go for the parting shot, I have nothing that is gonna switch in and deal with what he can bring in against the Mon I switched in. Essentially, I have to pick something that's probably gonna get KO'd the next turn. And I figured maybe Mesprit can get up rocks, at least, maybe, possibly, I don't know. Any Volt switches, check the calc, that is definitely Choice Specs. Manetric, which uh, isn't as scary actually if it was Scarf. If it was Scarf Manetric, that's what I think would have been a whole lot scarier in this match. But this most likely confirms the fact that this is Scarf Scyther because he has Specs uh, Manetric here. And then he most likely has Rain Dance on his Frost Slash and Ludicolo for Ludicolo and Kabutops accordingly. So in comes the Frost Slash. He makes a really good play here. Really, really good play and goes for the taunt. I was just hoping and praying that he would be aggressive with Shadow Ball or that he would try to get up a layer of spikes. But him going for taunt there was such an immaculate play and I just got read like a book on that one. And I'm forced to switch out here because I don't want to stay in and now take a Shadow Ball because he could be aggressive and go for the Shadow Ball. But he makes another really smart play. Goes for the spikes and now I am forced to go for the Dark Pulse. As in comes the Manetric. I do 48%. And now I'm thinking, okay, maybe he will stay in. And then I can go for the never ending, um, ne not never ending nightmare, never ending That's the ghost move, a uh, black hole eclipse. I can go for black hole eclipse, which is my dark pole Z move, and then knock out this Manetric. And that is one huge offensive presence that he no longer has in this match. But he makes another, just, oh my lord, dude, I am getting so destroyed right now man like this matchup already is not in my favor whatsoever and then he's just predicting the holy hell out of me as he reveals to have rain dance on his silvali now i honestly did not expect him to have rain on silvali here but it is actually a pretty nice tech move on his end so the good thing for me is that he does not have the, uh, what's it called, the Damp Rock because obviously he's holding the Fairy Memory. So he only has five turns of rain and that is something I can potentially play around or it'll just be enough for him to wreck half of my team here. So I'm going to try and get up my rocks. I know for a fact he's going for the parting shot, but it doesn't matter if I did want to go for the U-turn there because if he had, um, actually... In hindsight, U-turn might have been my better play now that I think about it. Yeah, because he could have parting shot, I guess, maybe into Scyther? And I guess that's the only way it could have been a little bit bad. But then I still get a switch into my Mega, I mean, into my Aggron. Yeah, yeah, going for rocks here was a little bit bad now that I think about it. But this was most likely the only chance uh, I would have had to get up rocks. And rocks are still very, very handy in this match because he most likely does not have rapid spin on his kabutops which means i get off 25 percent on frost Lass and an instant 50 percent off on scyther and more chip damage on this manetric to hopefully prevent it from just coming in and bolt switching for free as you can see here he goes for the hydro pump i really wanted to switch into my polyrath here but if i lose polyrath i lose to kabutops hands down at least by losing my Mesprit here, this gives me a free switch into my Dodrio. And now is the question of, is he going to stay in hoping that I am not Scarfed? Or is he going to want to switch into Kabutops? Which means I can either go for Brave Bird, expecting him to stay in. Or I can try and go for the Jump Kick in hopes to be able to knock out the Kabutops on the switch in here. Ultimately though, Brave Bird is by far the best play I thought I could have made because this Ludicolo is just way, way too big of a threat. I cannot mess around with this thing in the rain. I need to Brave Bird. I have to Brave Bird essentially I was thinking as I smack the incoming Kabutops here. That does 37%. Now, I will not lie to you, I thought this would only do like 20%, but the fact that this did 37% is absolutely amazing because if this Kabutops is life orbed, it's going to weaken itself so low to the point where he will no longer be able to switch in to my Dodrio's Brave Bird, which means my Dodrio could just get a kill. And on the other hand, I can also go for return a little bit more safely however though he still does have the frost last in the back my throat is getting dry hold on so i'm forced to switch out here but 
I do have a very good answer to this Kabutops in the form of my Polyrath. As it turns out, he actually does have the Stealth Rocks on Kabutops. I for a second thought he wouldn't have rocks on Kabutops, although I guess it does kind of make sense because if anything, Kabutops gets up rocks, Frost Slash spikes, and then Ludicolo in itself is such a beast to deal with that he can just win games and Kabutops can just be an offensive rocker to potentially break something. So I figured here that the fighting move is clearly too obvious. I don't want to go for the water move if he feels aggressive and wants to bring in Ludicolo, so I decided to make a middle ground play here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and go for the Toxic. As in comes the Frost Slash, I will be able to Toxic that, which I guess is kind of nice, because now I put it on a timer, and he might not feel uh, as... Sorry, what am I trying to say? He might not feel like going for Spikes, because of Toxic now. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out here. I'm pretty sure he's going to go for Shadow Ball, which is why I switch into my Alolan Persian. I can live any hit this thing wants to go for, but it turns out he has Rain Dance on this too. And I don't know if he's Focus Sashed or if he's Damp Brock. If he's Damp Brock, that's eight turns that I have to try and maneuver around this Ludicolo and Kabutops. So I thought about this play for a minute or so because what I could do is be aggressive and go for the Dark Pulse. Knocking out this Frost Slash, and then in return he brings in uh, one of his offensive threats. What I could also do is go for the Parting Shot in hopes that he will go for Ice Beam as I Parting Shot into my Polyrath. I can try and waste a few turns of the rain, and I think ultimately I go for the Parting Shot because I need to waste these turns of rain as he brings in the Silvali Fairy. I am going to bring in my choice Bandit Aggron. I do not care if he wants to sack off Frost Slash. I am going to absolutely murder something with this head smash that is of course if I actually connect my head smash which I will not be able to as in comes the frost slash. Uh, either way though I'm just going to leave an aggron here. Aggron does nothing for me in this game outside of maybe get one kill then die. So yeah down goes frost slash and down goes the uh, what's it called the aggron. So as you see here he brings in kabutops and I decided to bring in my dojo just on the off chance he didn't bring in Kabutops although looking back at it Kabutops was actually his best switch in because of the fact that I do have Scarf Dodrio and this in the rain being jolly is able to outspeed me plus he's able to get uh, another round of Stealth Rocks chip damage off on me which uh, is actually really bad for me because if he has Aqua Jet eventually I'm gonna be in range of where Aqua Jet knocks me out because I am 100% forced to switch out here as he knows this but he is going to make an aggressive play I think stays in and goes for the liquidation as my uh, Polyrath is able to take that and actually it's really good because he puts me back up to full HP which means I can still be a constant switch in to this Kabutops and now much like earlier I can be aggressive here I can go for the Focus Blast maybe I can also uh, potentially go for Scald Toxic also is not that bad for me to have gone for here but I go for the Focus Blast because I thought that he was going to try to switch in to his Ludicolo thinking that I would go for the Scald this time around so I was hoping to catch that with the Focus Blast but he brings in the freaking Silvali Fairy and I miss Focus Blast now obviously me missing a Focus Blast on Silvali Fairy at this turn in the battle literally doesn't matter because it would have done what like maybe five or six percent but you're gonna see that the fact I missed this Focus Blast is actually a little bit crucial later in the game here so I am clearly forced to switch out if I lose my Polyrath I lose to Kabutops hands down so expecting him to go for the multi attack and hoping that maybe my Frost Slash would live I make an aggressive switch here into my Frost Slash and now this is really good for me because I can take this opportunity to hopefully get up a layer of spikes as he decides to go for the parting shot and me getting up spikes is amazing because, oh, look at the chip damage. Oh my lord, that chip damage is so beautiful. This is so, so good because I still have Vacuum Wave on my Polyrath. So if I can weaken Ludicolo, Silvali, Manetric, 
enough, Vacuum Wave picks them off even though they all outspeed my Polyrath, and then at that point all I have to do is worry about Scyther, which is still going to lose 50% of its HP upon switching. So I decide to go for the taunt here because I don't want this Ludicolo to go for the Rain Dance. I don't care if he does predict me to go for taunt, I am going to taunt 100% of the time because I don't want this rain to be back up. So he does try to go for the rain dance as I then will be able to go for the ice beam, putting him in range of where now my Alolan Persian can actually knock him out with the dark pulse. However though, because of me missing that focus blast on this Silvali earlier, if this is uh, max HP Silvali or depending on Actually, that's what I should have said. Depending on how much HP investment and how much bulk investment this Silvali has, a Thunderbolt after rocks and after spikes will not be enough to knock him out. And that's where that extra little bit of damage from Focus Blast would have been really, really good for me. Because now, it doesn't matter if I bring in my Alone the Persian, he can still probably live a hit with Silvali. And then at that point, he's able to uh, multi-attack and knock me out. And I only have... Uh, two more switch-ins with my Dodrio, so I need to be very very careful on how I play my Dodrio. Now, yes, I could have brought in Dodrio here, and being Scarfed, I outspeed the entirety of his team. If he doesn't have Aqua Jet on the Kabutops after Hazards, I knock him out with Return. However though, Scyther, even though Scyther will lose 50% of its HP, because I cannot lock myself into Brave Bird, I need to lock myself into Return. Scyther still lives a Return even if I get absolute maximum damage. And then in Return, he could potentially knock me out. And if I lose my Dodrio, I lose this match essentially. So I'm more or less forced to bring in my Alolan Persian here. Because if I brought in my Polyrath, I think Ludicolo could have still lived Vacuum Wave. And then even if I knocked him out, in comes the Manetric or in comes the Silvali Fairy. So yeah, I need to bring in my Persian here and hope that he's not a super bulky Silvali Fairy after I knock out the Ludicolo here. So I can knock out Silvali with my Thunderbolt. As down goes Ludicolo, he actually ends up bringing in Scyther. And this right here was actually so, so good for me because what this means is that he has two options to go for. Well, I guess three. U-turn, X-Scissor, or Aerial Lace. If he goes for Aerial Lace, I'm pretty sure I live. And then I can weaken him enough to where return from my Scarf Dojiro just wins. I could be aggressive with that play. I could also try to switch into my Polyrath in hopes that he goes for the X-Scissor. And then because he most likely is Scarfed, I force him out and then I'm able to Scald something for free and potentially get a KO with Scald into Vacuum Wave after Entry Hazards. So, at this moment, I figured that it's actually probably better for me to leave in my Purging here because even if he goes for the X-Scissor, I just bring in my Polyrath for free and I get a Scald off or I force him out. So me sacking my Alolan Persian here was definitely the better play I could have made in my opinion as he U-turns out, in comes the Manetric. At this point with Kabutops uh, being so low, uh, you cannot, uh, why can't you see the HP? I don't know. Kabutops basically doesn't live a return after rocks and spikes. So my Scarf Dojo outspeeds the entirety of his team and now could potentially win me the battle. So down goes the Manetric. In comes Silvali Fairy after Hazards, it will not live. And the fact that he brought in Silvali Fairy before Kabutops tells me that this Kabutops does not have the Aqua Jet because he does not go for it here. I'm able to knock him out and then Scyther being his very last Mon will not be fast enough for Dodrio. And we pull out the victory for PU Winter Seasonals Round 1. Holy crap, man. Game 1 and Game 2 were just such nail biters for me, man. If I had misplayed even worse in Game 1, I would have lost to the stall. Game 2, I tossed away Jellison, and then there was pretty much nothing I could do at that point. And then Game 3 here, I really just, I had to sit down, man. I had to sit down and just think about, like, what am I going to do? And I was able to position myself for, uh, for Dojo here to be able to win and just... 
very good games to Wolf Chi Man. So if you guys did enjoy, 60 likes is our goal for today's video. Guys, again, if this goes up on Monday, no more PC issues, so I will 110% see you guys on Tuesday. Thank y'all so much. Again, let me know if you like this little format or if you just want me to show uh, the battle screen itself without the chat here. So love you guys. I will see y'all tomorrow later.